So in my previous video, I talked briefly about hearing this very large praying mantis being in my room. And I, so I decided to make a separate video and I, cause, because I just decided to look into this stuff, look into this praying mantis stuff a little bit more and I, what I found was really creepy. So I decided to make another video about it. In the ancient world, uh, the praying mantis was something very bad. Uh, of course, they thought it was good. Okay, from their point of view, the spirit world and going into the the underworld and te spirit guides were a good thing but i'm telling you that, that these things are not good okay i knew when i heard this thing this thing was evil and this thing was not here to help me you know this this praying mantis thing was a real thing and according to their culture the spiritual meaning of a praying mantis represents trust introspection new perspectives intuitive abilities and spiritual connection it is a often a sign that the energies of other dimensions are sending you a message to trust your own inner guidance and to be patient to wait for the flow of the universe to sort everything out this is all new age stuff all right this is this thing is a really old demonic entity it's it's these things are part animal and they're often go watch hell testimonies a lot of these things are part insect but these you know of course back then and now they think this thing is like some alien there to help them and I don't think it's a coincidence that this these things the when I saw these things this is they were green and praying mantises are green even though I did not see this thing I heard it this mantis man is a very common shared hieroglyph between all ancient cultures this is called the mantis man they named him the mantis man it's a demonic entity. I'm not kidding. This thing did not sound like it was there helping me. This thing sounded like it was a monster. It sounded like it was a 10 foot monster. It was made, it made really high, like a really a clicking sound. Like it was a big insect. It sounded like a praying mantis or some, a big insect. <clears throat> There's every ancient culture has this praying mantis. This is, an, this is a praying mantis on an open mouth ceremony. Don't get me started on the open mouth ceremony right now. I'm, I didn't even mean to look that up. It just said this praying mantis figure is during the open mouth ceremonies on the walls. It's obviously a, an open mouth just means third eye stuff too. I already made a video about that. So when you're seeing this thing and hearing this thing, it has a, it has a connection with your third eye being opened. Alright, this is ancient culture stuff. And I, this is really scary. And while I'm talking about, uh, I'm talking about hieroglyphs. There's, these are hieroglyphs from Native American people. Uh, I actually went in person and saw these, all right, in Chaco Canyon. These, and it's so funny because the guide will tell you, we don't know what these mean. We don't understand. They're just really creepy hieroglyphs. What do you, well, look at these pictures. These are vortexes. These are portals and supernatural beings coming out of it. That's what they are. This one even looks like a bug. Look. Or a spider and it looks like a scorpion or something this is not a human being give me a break this is not a human being this is a supernatural being coming from a portal and if you don't think if you don't think so if oh these are just sun this is just the sun okay but the sun is a portal too people say okay it's uh, i know that sounds very fringy but these are vortexes okay these native american people we're seeing supernatural beings coming from either the sun or other vortexes. The Egyptians, I think, were actually seeing things, things coming out of the sun. I know that's very fringy. That's why they were. That's why all the sun god stuff started happening. Okay. And look at this one. This is actually a supernatural being attached to the portal coming out. And I know this sounds very fringy and scary, but this has happened. This happened. All right. These. Ancient cultures were doing ceremonies to summon spirits coming from the underworld. All right, and the you guys, the Earth is under a curse. Sometimes these things come from the sky too. That's where this whole alien thing started. All right, that include the Earth is under the curse. That it, it that includes Earth's atmosphere from above. All right, and that's why these they people thought these things were coming from heaven because they don't realize that the the atmosphere is under a curse the above the firmament above is under a curse all right i'm not talking about flat earth stuff right now but the firmament stuff is real but i don't 
I'm just saying the firmament, in my opinion, is another dimension. It's not actual glass or anything like that. Okay, I'm, I think there's a dimensional barrier there. I don't think it's made of glass. And in my opinion, it's just talk, the Bible when it talks about, you know, shapes, shapes of the earth. It's talking about dimensions. All right, I'll talk about that in another video. I really don't care if you're a flat earther or a round earther, as long as you believe in Jesus Christ. I don't really care. It doesn't matter to me. I don't care what shape you, the earth you think it is, but please believe in Jesus, okay? I don't care if you think the moon is made of cheese. As long as you believe in Jesus, I, you're, I'm good. You're good. Um. Anyway, so the, yeah, these things are vortexes with these things coming out. That's what this. This is not a human being coming out of that thing. What is that thing? It's a supernatural beast. It's. An evil spirit coming from the underworld. Of course, they thought this thing was cool. They're like, oh man, these are the gods. And I'm just like, oh no. Anyway, and this is also very interesting. When I went to Chocolate Canyon, there was a couple there. And they said they have the exact... They were from... I think they were from Peru. And they said they have the exact same images on their hieroglyphs when they go to the ancient um, temples and stuff like that. Do you know why? Because these things were all these ancient cultures were beckoning the same evil spirits. That's why. It's not a mystery. It's be Everyone's like we don't know why all these hieroglyphs are the same all over the world. Why they're drawing bug people and praying mantises and like you know mantis like bug eyed people. It's because they're evil spirits. All right, and people will say, yeah, aliens, but aliens are just evil. They're coming from the underworld. They're evil spirits. All right. These are depictions of supernatural beings coming out of portals. What Babylon, United States, Australia, Egypt, India slash Switzerland. All right. These are all depictions of supernatural beings coming out of portals. They're demons. And in all these ancient cultures, this praying mantis entity is it's supposed to be a guide to seeing to the other, the other side and into the underworld, they say. They'll give you access to the underworld, which is just hell. It, or they'll, they'll, they, they'll, this thing will give you access to the other dimensions. This thing is in every culture. Go look it up. Every culture has this thing. And they all say the same thing. This is an entity. They'll call it a messenger. Which messenger just means angel. Do you think this is a good angel? No. This is a spirit messenger. That'll give you access to the other side. To these other dimensions. Which is just, just the demonic realm. Okay, this is a trick. And I think it's this is really creepy. Mantis in Greek means prophet. So you are a prophet. This thing is supposed to be give you a pro if you see this thing, you're supposed to be a, a prophet for God, for the gods. Do you think it's a prophet for Jesus or not? And this is all creepy because I I was under extreme demonic attack. And I you know, I could see things and I wasn't allowed to be seeing this stuff. You, you, you doing weird, you having access to the spirit world against God is very, it's demonic, okay? And that's what was happening to me, with me. And this other chick, I, I would hope I can find her testimony. Um, she talked about how she was doing new age stuff and she started having all these new abilities. Like, she could see into people's futures. She could read people's, you know, like palm reading and all that stuff. You know that stuff, like th that psychic stuff. Like, oh, you're a prophet for the gods now. This is evil witchcraft. The devil can give you abilities to access supernatural dim dimensions, but you are going to be in big trouble. All right. And this girl says she could. She was like a psychic. I could not see into, into people's futures, and I don't want to. But I could definitely hear and see things. I wasn't allowed to be seen. It was uh, it was not it was not in my part of my own realm as a human being. All right. So you being a prophet of God and talking to people and saying doing this stuff, it, when it says, "Oh, you're a prophet," it doesn't mean for the God of the Bible prophet. Okay, it's bad. 
like psychics, they ha they have a part of their third eye opened. They are sensing into the spirit world. Right? This thing is going to allow you access to sense into the spirit world, and it's not a but it's not a good thing. So it's creepy that mantis in Greek means prophet. Like it's a good thing. Like this is a gift from the gods, and it's a trick. You'll be in big trouble. So I'm going to give you some a Bible passage, and I'm going to show you some evidence and some stories, and you tell me this is not just a coincidence. So, in the book of Revelation, Revelation 9, it's Revelation 9, 7 through 11, basically, it talks about locusts wearing breastplates. It's uh, between a locust and a, and it, had st it has stingers and it has crowns too, but they're locusts. It has These have multi-dimensional meanings, okay? But it talks about locusts or insects wearing breastplates and wearing armor. Okay, now look at this. Alright, so I'm going to read Revelation 7 through 11. This has multi dimension In my perspective, I'm not kidding. God has multi-dimensional meanings to these passages. Some people say that th this is describing helicopters. Because helicopters kind of look like locusts flying in the sky. So, you know, John was just trying to describe what he was seeing in the best way he could. I think it is talking about helicopters. Helicopters, you know, they hover and they kind of look like locusts with crowns on top. And they have a stinger, which is like, you know, the guns... Okay, so the, the people say that the, this is talking about um, a world war. Okay, and it is. It's talking about multidimensional meanings. But I'm telling you, it also is talking about aliens and UFOs. And I'm going to read it to you. You tell me this. You connect the Look at these pictures and see what I'm saying. These are just basic pictures of aliens and UFOs, right? And the mantis being especially. And I really want to talk about the breastplate in a minute. All right. But um, I'm going to read it to you. <clears throat> Revelation 7. Revelation 9, 7, sorry. The shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle. And their heads were like crowns like gold. And their faces were the faces of men. And they had hair on the hair of women. And the teeth were the teeth of lions. There we go, those li oh, those teeth, li lion's teeth again. And this is probably talking about CERN too. This metal breastplate that has an open mouth on it. it keeps, keeps coming up. And they had breastplates. And they had breastplates. And they were breastplates of iron that sounded of their wings as the sounds of chariots and many horses running to battle. And they had tails like unto scorpions. And their, st and their stingers in their tails. And their, power of the, of the, and their power was to hurt men five months. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit. Whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, and in the Greek tongue his name is Apollyon. So you have to really think about theology and philosophy. We're fallen angels. There are fallen flying things from the sky, right? Fallen angels. That's describing aliens too. There's too much philosophy behind it. And this also, aliens are supposed to tie you back to the Nephilim. This mantis being our bug, half man, half bug. What were the Nephilim? You have to. Have, I know people get, I notice that people get kind of like they dis disagree with me and that's fine. You can disagree with me. This is just my perspective. All right. What were the Nephilim? Okay. They are sons of God slash human. They were part God, part human. And book of, in the book of Enoch, it des describes why they, in the book of Enoch and in the Dead Sea Scrolls, it describes them better. Okay. It describes them as being unclean. What makes them unclean is because when you combine two things, two or more things together that don't belong together, it makes them unclean and evil. Okay, you cannot combine a human and a god. Unless it's with Jesus Christ. There's a good there's a good side of the story. That is the only way though. No one does that though, right? That's why all these Greek gods are also Nephilim archetypes, alright? These Greek gods are half god and half human, just like the Nephilim. The Nephilim were half god and half human. There are fallen angel gods, but you get my point. These things, people thought, just like back then, they thought these things were gods. These aliens were gods. These mothmen, these mantis beings were gods. They literally called them gods, all right? They gave them god names. They are part insect, 
or part metal and human. All right, mantis man that's supposed to tie you back to the Nephilim. God describes things multidimensionally. All right, being part bug and part man is an unclean spirit. It's supposed to tie you back to the Nephilim. You cannot combine these two things and have it be, it's unclean. What makes a spirit unclean? It's when you combine two things that don't belong together. That's why I also say that superheroes are at, are Nephilim archetypes. There are Nephilim archetypes. Among other things, you cannot combine animals with humans and may have a supernatural being that's good. You cannot, Batman is part bat, part man. You can't do that. That's an unclean spirit. You can't have a, and it's so creepy because these all these superheroes are part um, unclean animal on top of that. You can't have a man that's part spider and part man. You can't have a man that's part iron and part man. You can't have Iron Man. It's, it's Nephilim theology. All right. I know people just think the Nephilim is just, they were giants that died a long time ago. And that's true. Okay. But you have to think of the symbolism and the theology. And it goes even deeper than that. You cannot combine two things together that don't belong together. The Catholic the Church is an unclean spirit. Why is it unclean? It combines pagan witchcraft with stories from the Bible. It combines... It mixes together. It's a comp The Catholic Church is a mixture of all these pagan religion worship and the Bible. It is an unclean spirit. You cannot mix these things together. That's the theology and one of the meanings behind the book of Daniel's dream. This man, he's unclean. He's a mixture of things that don't belong together. Not just two things, but a bunch of things. And the more you add into it, the more the worse it gets. It doesn't get better. Mixing two things is bad enough. When you mix more things in with it, it gets more and more unclean. You cannot combine two things that don't belong together. That's why aliens are unclean evil spirits among other many other reasons what does every single alien encounter and abduction story have in common the most common thing is that they're trying to combine humans with themselves they're trying to make offspring or they say that they already have and say that you're you're my mirror you're my son you're you're an offspring of me that's still nephilim slash demon theology they are tr what did the sons of god do they mated with women and made nephilim they are trying to they are trying to poison the bloodline the human bloodline and these people are saying the same exact thing with these aliens they are saying these these you know aliens or mantis beings are tr they they are trying to you know pop repopulate or they're trying or they're telling you that they already have that there are already many of you on on the earth there's already hybrids all over the earth of them, and then you're one of them, and they're just contacting you. Like, you guys, these things are trying to make you feel special when you get abducted by aliens, or if you see, you know, like they see these people who see aliens. They're they're demons. They're trying to make you feel special. Like they chose you. You are the special bloodline. You're the special one to make you feel special. But you're actually just digging your own pit into hell. Okay, you these things are not coming from a nice place. These are coming from a, they're interdimensional beings coming from the, a hell dimension. It's serious. These things are not here to help you. Just like the guys, these things always come to you pretending that they're helping you. The devil is not coming to you being mean. I was hearing these things too, and they were being nice to me at first. They were being very, very nice to me. And when I stopped listening to them, they started getting angry. Right? They started revealing their true colors, and they have they have chariots in the sky. There are many, many Bible verses where it talks about horses and chariots in the sky. And I do believe it's talking about UFOs too. It's talking about all these Greek gods too. I'll, in my next video, you will see what I'm talking about. But it's these balls chariot is in the sky. He's a cloud rider. Whenever you hear a sea chariots in the sky, it's not always a good thing. But because people get too caught up on the just what the Hebrew writers were trying to say. But you have to, you have to remember what God is speaking. Of course, the Hebrew writers probably didn't know what aliens were, but you have to remember these are the words of God, and He knows that we would start seeing these things, right? And that we have always seen these things, actually. These things are from thousands of years ago. I just showed you pictures of them. 
he knew what, that we would have a problem. Like people would, would see these things as gods, and they would like these things. Most people don't know, think the aliens are nice. Okay, or they had they know they're evil, but they don't understand why. They're 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 from the they're they're, they're from hell. They're spirits from hell. All right. So I'm just gonna play some testimonies. I think I'm just going to do voiceovers and look at them talk about these things. They're just just like the ancient people. They they they're, they're just so happy to to be encounter having an encounter with these things. Just like the ancient people. We're still worshiping these same things, okay? We're still glorifying these things, thinking that they're good and helping us. And I really want to focus on a couple of ones where they talk about breastplates. They're wearing a lot of the, some of these testimonies are wearing breastplates, just like in the just like the passage just described. These locusts wearing breastplates in chariots, I right? I wasn't asleep. I wasn't dreaming. It was something landed on my back, and I saw a brown mantis in my mind's eye, and I immediately stood up and it was gone. That it was like. Oops, I landed in the wrong place. Like a mantis being, and some people um, refer to mantis beings as like aliens. I think they're kind of beings of a different realm or dimension. Like five times bigger than myself, huge mantis, um, which I perceived to be female. And uh, the only thing she said was, you are my son. Um, are they human or not? on a kind of metallic kind of environment. I don't know if it was inside of a ship. Again, this was in the astral realm and, and I've never seen or experienced nothing with my physical body and my physical eyes. So everything is within the spiritual kind of realm and uh, I perceive them as kind of shiny grey shiny green or shiny kind of copper brown. I promise to you, everything that happened is true. I woke up at about 2.30 in the morning to find a tall praying mantis looking being and a cloaked being by the side of my bed and reflecting light much like a beetle's skin. The praying mantis turned its head towards the hooded one and made a series of high-pitched clicking sounds. And, and I recall that it was tall, at least seven foot. It had, had to bend its neck because of the height of the ceiling. Its, its head was pointed, with large eyes. Its forearms were extremely long and moved in a jerky fashion. The cloaked figure was closer, crouched by my bed. So I couldn't tell how tall it was, but I could clearly see that it was wearing some kind of overlapping rigid armor, including a metallic-looking breastplate that had a series of circles on it. Its head was dome-like with emotionless facial features. Its eyes were large and surrounded again by detailed ridges. It acted in a way that reminded me of a robot or insect. And this one's really creepy. Of course, he talks about how these things are metal, or wearing metal again. This, and then another mention of a praying mantis one. And these things literally told him that they are the watchers from the Bible. Of course, they think that, that that's a good thing. That like they're good angels or good holy beings. <laughs> these things literally are telling them that they're demons, and they're you guys. This isn't funny. These things are literally laughing at us. Okay, the devil and these demons are literally laughing at people because they know most people don't know that the watchers, the watchers are the fallen angels. Right? The watchers are the original watchers of the fallen angels. These things are literally telling these people that they're the watchers from the Bible because they know that you think that they don't that they know that you don't understand it. They're making fun of you. Anyway, here look at this this uh, testimony. Um, these people are not saved people. These are people just had had encounters with these things. They have no idea that these things are alien. That these things are demons. They think they're good. Again and again, they think these are, these are things are good. It's so it's so sad. These things are demons, you guys. They always put the devil always appears as a being of light, like he's there helping you. He's not all right. Anyway, here we go. Hold yeah. on, they had silver suits on. Okay, so. The next thing I remember, 
is I'm in this big room that's like stone and, and metal mixed together. Six foot tall praying mantis. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I could definitely see the scales, but I remember it was also was very shiny. Um, it was weird. It's like he radiated light and energy and this just feelings. They've been drilling me with scriptures and, and telling me to look up stuff. And I know that sounds crazy, um, but they explain things to me. Uh, like, okay, there's four scriptures in the Bible that talk about, I think it's Daniel, where he's praying and it says a holy one and a watcher came down to see him. Mm-hmm. Okay, there's four scriptures that mention those two groups in particular, holy ones and watchers. And they told me that's them. Watchers are the grace, is what they tell me. Holy ones are the tall white guys. Um, I still don't know where they are. All right, so I'm going to give you a few more details before I end this video. Um, I need to do a whole video on the history of the crown. I kind of talked about it in my Christmas video when I was talking about Christmas hats, because this is where we get Christmas hats too from. You know, like this, the Fijian cap is the pointed crown. These pointed heads they're describing, these point are still the crowns on top of their head. This is still a crown. The original crowns were one-horned. They were one-horned. The kings, the Babylonian kings, the Egyptians, they were wearing serpent crowns, but they were also wearing one-horned crowns of Baal, okay, of the devil. One. So these things are still wearing crowns, just like the Bible passage says. The, the UFO could be a crown, too. It's a big metal crown, it's a big round crown. And the uh, book of Ezekiel, when it talks about these circles, it's talking about crowns too. I'll talk about that later. But this one horn is a crown. It's very important that so these things are still wearing crowns, just like the Bible passage says. And also, these it's creepy because the Bible passage also kind of says that these things are female, or they claim to be female anyway. Um. And the half, most of the time, these things say that they're female. When these people see these things, that they're female. Oh, I gave birth to you. Like you're my child. And that kind of, and it scares me. I did, I didn't know any of this stuff until this week. I did research on this week for about this praying mantis stuff because I didn't know any of this stuff. I knew some of it. I knew that the praying mantis was an alien, but I didn't know. It's creepy because when I when I looked into these t- you know these stories of people seeing this thing. Um, it says that they, that you are my son and it kind of scares me on my previous video when I saw this, this ghost and it didn't tell me it was my son. He was my son. He was looking for his son though. I think that's a weird coincidence. I also think it's a weird coincidence with the helicopter sting. In my previous video, I talk about how I saw a helicopter outside, but I d- it looked like a helicopter though. It didn't look like a UFO. All right. But I don't think it was a real helicopter. Okay, and it creeps me out when it connects the helicopters with this, that Bible passage too. I just wanted to add that in there. And And there's only one incident where I might have seen a locust demonic thing sometimes, but I didn't see it very well because the it was pitch black. All right, it was like looking at a pitch black thing in in a pitch black room, and it looked like there was a locust, like a big locust. When I mean big, I mean this thing was like probably like three feet long, but it was you know spiritually there. If I went to go pit, if I went to go walk up and look at, it, touch it, I wouldn't touch it. It it, it would be it would be it would be gone. One other time, I saw in the corner of my door, in the corner by the window, was a locust-looking thing, and it was making really really gross sucking sounds like it was sucking my blood or something or sucking blood it was terrifying but that was a the visual of that is very very vague but it did kind of have a locust form to it it looked like a grasshopper or something but it was like only like three feet three feet long two feet long and also i wanted to bring up the robot thing when people say they move like robots Please go watch my hell testimony. In hell, and these other dimensions, their time doesn't work the same way. Time doesn't work the same way. 
people in hell are not moving the same way they we do in, on earth they're moving like they're moving fast but slow okay it's hard to explain it's like slow-mo but fast i know that doesn't make sense but that's why in all these movies you know like the scary people if you ever see like you know these ghost movies like they're moving really fast and they're moving really slow that's why these things are coming from a hell dimension that's why they are moving weird their movements are stuttered they're moving like robots because in the other dimensions there's time doesn't work the same way so they're they're not not moving in a timely fashion that is why I'm, I encourage you if you are seeing these things or hearing the, these things or think these things are even cool I, 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 I want you to know that these things come from hell they really do they come from a hell dimension and just like these ancient people thought they were cool you're thinking that they're cool and they're not these things are um, these things are demonic they come from the demonic realm Please, and you just being obs- you just going into like into being into alien movies and I used to be really into alien movies. I used to read a lot of alien books. And anyway, you can't you can't you you need to have your, God Jesus Christ needs to be your priority, or you will go be with these things. You want to be obsessed. You want to spend all your time, energy, emotions with being obsessed with aliens. That's just as bad as seeing and talking to them. All right. And God uses parallelism. He uses parallelism. He uses parallel thought to, com- to compare and contrast things. The sons of God, they are fallen angels that mated with women and made Nephilim. They are half God, half man. You can either choose those ones, these ones in this video, or you can choose this son of God. This man slash God. He uses parallelism. He uses it so you can see which path to choose and you have to make a choice. You can either choose this son of God, or you can choose the Watchers, sons of God. He, this is the real son of God. This is the real chariot. It even says in the Bible, these chariots of this chariots in the sky. The people, of the ancient world, thought they were leading them to heaven. God says He's the real chariot in the sky. That's why Elijah was picked up by a chariot. Elijah was picked up by a chariot. He's trying to say these are the type of people who are really going to heaven. Who these people who are following these people of the Bible, these men of the Bible, and this man of the Bible, are the real gateways into heaven. The only real gateway to heaven is Jesus Christ. Not through aliens. You're not gonna go to a good place if you believe in aliens. That these aliens are gonna here to help you and save you. You're not gonna go to a good place if you're believing in ghosts, aliens. Mothman, Mantis beings, whatever. They all are they all do have the same king over them and it's not the king of heaven. They are lying to you. People are so funny. They'll believe in anything. About aliens, they'll believe in anything. they'll believe that the pyramids were UFOs. They'll believe in the, the some of the craziest stuff. And some of that stuff is kind of true cuz they're all related because they're all come they all come from the devil. That's why there there's a rela- is a relation there. They'll believe that the Anunnaki is coming back. These are Anunnaki are just the Babylonian gods. They believe that the Babylonian gods are aliens. And the thing is, there is a connection with all of these things. They all because they all belong to the devil. They all they're all evil. That's the connection. They'll they, you know, the devil can literally s- sit on your face. Literally, a moth being or a pimantus being can literally sit on your face, and you will still not believe. That there is another dimension out there, an evil dimension out there, that you will go to when you die. The people, people know they'll even use Bible, the Bible, to prove that these aliens are real, but they won't read what the Bible says about them. That hello, there's the Bible says you have to believe in this man right here to go to the real good dimension of heaven. Came here to help them, but they won't believe that this supernatural being came to help them. Even though those things have very few evidence of them helping anyone. They just come and mess up their life. These aliens, all they do is sexually assault their victims and do horrible experiments on them. But they still think they're there helping them. So the evidence of them helping you are very little, right? 
the evidence of this guy coming through a supernatural portal in heaven and actually helping you, the evidence of this guy really rising from the dead to help you, is a lot. There's so much evidence that this really happened, but they still will not believe that this is the only way to heaven, that this is the true God. So you need to really think about that. You can't just take Bible passages and use them for your conspiracy theories and not understand what the Bible is really saying. It's saying that you need to believe in this guy to go to heaven. He's the only way to heaven. He's the only golden gate to heaven. That's the point. And if you are, if you are, again, if, even if you're not talking to aliens or seeing ghosts, you being obsessed or bl obsessed with alien stuff and ghosts and robots in witches, okay, you just watching movies and liking these things more than Jesus it will still lead you there. Alright, you don't have to be tapping into the demonic realm physically to still go there when you die. Alright, so please think about this, guys, and please read the Bible for what it's saying. Christ is the only supernatural entity, and the Holy Spirit is the only spirit guide you are allowed to combine yourself with. You have to attach yourself and combine yourself with this entity, okay? This oh, this is the only good entity you have that God provided for you. No other spirit guides are going to... All these other spirit guides, whether they be mantis beings or aliens or any other kind of spirit guides, they're going to guide you to hell. This is the only way to heaven. is to combine yourself with the blood of Christ and be washed in the blood of Christ. So please think about this.